Popular woodworking chief Megan Fitzpatrick says that the top three questions the magazine gets are about workbenches, finishing, and hand planes in that order. They provided tons of information on all three topics, but she says one of the best articles on hand planes was written by Chris Schwartz a long time ago in Woodworking Magazine. It was an article entitled Coarse, Medium, Fine, and it was about using bench planes along with machinery to speed up your work. If you've never read the article, you can get it for free at the link in the show notes below. There's also several other recommendations from Megan on other hand plane related material, so check it out. When she's not sharing hand plane resources, Megan Fitzpatrick is gallivanting all over the country, interviewing master woodworkers like Toshio Odate. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce that right. She sat down with her list of questions recently, only to find herself conducting one of the easiest interviews she's ever done. Toshio just began talking, and she just began listening. Nine hours of footage later, and they had covered everything from sharpening tips to discussions of art and philosophy, as well as a tour of his workshop and a look at some of the amazing pieces he has in the works. She says the footage will be released in a series of videos late this summer, but you can get a peek through a series of photos she's posted on the popular woodworking website. Here's a couple YouTube videos that caught our interest recently. Izzy Swan of Think Woodworks built a gear-driven router circle cutting jig that will just make your head spin. So let me show you how this thing works. Meanwhile, Frank Haworth has been deep into a kitchen remodel and filming it in a way only he can. I'm at the point in the kitchen project where I've got several different stories going on at once. And what I need to do is sort of untangle all that so it makes sense as a video series. This video is about making the piece that goes on the top of all the cabinets. I've been calling it a a top plate, but it's a, it's a bunch of strips made into a frame, and then that frame will hold the different cabinets together, as well as hold the top of the cabinets rigid. And Get to check out our list of our favorite YouTube channels over at stuffingups.com slash friends. Popular Woodworking Magazine has begun writing articles about some of the featured speakers for the upcoming Woodworking in America conference. This past week they featured Kevin Drake founder of Glenn Drake Toolworks and creator of the Tight Mark Marking Gauge. Kevin says that understanding how tools work is a real secret to becoming a better woodworker. At the conference, he will teach proper turning technique, especially the way the body functions behind the lathe to avoid catches and other common problems. He reminds us that the important thing is to keep learning and building your skills. Projects are nice, but they don't improve our skills the way that practice does because we're never really willing to put our projects at risk. When we're willing to burn the results, we push the envelope. Ever since I read that, I've applied his advice by burning a dozen envelopes every day. He was right. I am getting very good at it. Paul Sellers says you should embrace your amateurism. The longtime professional says that he's tried to maintain the attitude of an amateur throughout his career, remembering to work for the love of the craft rather than the paycheck. It can be a difficult balance if you do earn a living from woodworking, but an essential one. The amateur takes more pride in his work. He enjoys the process, the smell, even the mistakes because they give him an opportunity to challenge himself further. Paul's blog on the subject is a refreshing read, so I've linked to it for you below in the show notes. Our senior tool correspondent, Mustache Mike, is here to tell us what's new in tools. Thank you, Stumpy. Oliver Tools has come out with a new take on a woodworking rasp. It's a carbide file designed for smoothing and shaping wood quickly and efficiently. They're made of the same carbide particle coating as their cuts all grinding wheels and burrs, and they're set to last far longer than traditional rasps. They make a flat version for leveling surfaces and a half round for curve shapes. Both come in three sizes and two grits. They aren't available for sale yet, so I can't tell you how much they'll cost, but I do expect them to hit the market by the end of this month. If the price is right, we'll get a set for the workshop and we'll see how they perform. If you're using a smoothing plane rather than sandpaper to finish your surfaces and getting tear out, you're probably going against the grain. 
But Chris Schwartz says the whole point of a smoothing plane, in his opinion, is to not have to worry about the grain direction. He has some tips to help you achieve that goal. Use a really sharp iron, take a really fine cut, and if that fails, try a higher bed angle, reduce the mouth opening, or fine tune your chip breaker. It's not always a good idea to employ all of these tips at the same time, which is why you'll want to read the article I've linked to in the show notes. There's also a great little video showing how you can accurately and quickly set your chip breaker using feeler gauges. We've been collecting names for our latest tool giveaway over the last few days. Our senior giveaway correspondent Mustache Mike is here to tell you exactly what it is and how you can win it. We're giving away a PorterMate PM7000 fold-up workstation with a retail price of $330. It's absolutely loaded with features and all you have to do to enter is to follow the instructions in the show notes below the video. Well, that about wraps things up for this episode of Behind the Sawdust. Visit StumpyLumps.com at least once a week so you don't miss any of the woodworking goodness we've got going on there. We have new projects coming out, a complete workshop remodel, and a lot more. And don't forget to help support what we do by checking out our project plans. Then you can sit back and have yourself a cold one, because you've earned it, my friend. <laughs>